There is talk in royal circles that the Queen will invest her grandson as a Knight of the Garter, joining the nine other royals who are in the order, in time for his wedding and for the annual Garter service in June, also held at St. George's Chapel. A while ago, the bracketing together of the terms, Harry, and Garter, would have induced a sinking feeling among royal staff but receiving the honor now would be a mark of his maturity and the beginning of his life as a married man. Knighting Harry would show the Sovereign's appreciation for his work on her behalf, his ten years of military service and for his organization of the Invictus Games. Harry's father, the Prince of Wales, received the honor in 1958, while Prince William became a knight in 2008. Prince Philip was admitted to the order in 1947, the year he married Princess Elizabeth. When Harry and the thank at Middleton Fire ST saw William in his garter garb they rocked with laughter. Kate blurted, oh, my God, as William appeared at his inauguration wearing a velvet robe, ostrich-plumed cap and a blue garter buckled to his leg. At the time, William looked embarrassed and Phi XED the pair with a steely glare. Now he can get his own back. Getty Prince Harry is likely to be wearing the Order of the Garter for his wedding nighting. Harry would show the Sovereign's appreciation for his work on her behalf, his ten years of military service and for his organization of the Invictus Games time for Meghan Myrtle. When Meghan walks down the aisle she will have to keep up one tradition in royal weddings that dates back to Queen Victoria. A sprig of myrtle, symbolizing good luck, is placed in the bride's bouquet, as it was with the Queen and, more recently, the Duchess of Cambridge. The cutting will come from a plant given to Victoria by Prince Albert Sand and was brought from Germany to grow at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. Rather than being deluged with toasters and towels, Harry and Meghan are likely to follow the example of William and Kate and suggest people make donations to charity instead of sending them gifts. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge broke with tradition by asking for donations instead of presents, a move that raised just over £1 million for their 26 charities. Contributions were also made to the couple's charitable foundation from wedding-related projects, including a donation by Decca Records from sales of the Office CIAL album and from Mario Testino for sales of his photograph used in the wedding program. Richard Young Rex Donna Air and James Middleton, even if Donna Air's on-off relationship is going through one of its on phases, she won't be seeing much of James Middleton this Christmas, thanks to her. Commitment to training for Dancing on Ice, the first live show is at the start of January, so I'm going to be training hard, spinning around on the ice for the festive holiday. It's become very addictive, Donna tells me. Indeed she seems far more enthusiastic about the show than talking about her bearded boyfriend she has been going out, in a rather haphazard way, with the Duchess of Cambridge's brother for four years. But the Geordie Poppet, 38, might just make James a little jealous with the way she gushes over her fellow skater, Scottsburn Mark Hanretti, 32, I really lucked out with him as my partner, he's amazing. If you like the person you're working with a lot it certainly helps, beamed Donna, who was at the launch of Morella Cruz's first spa at sea with Champnez. Last year Donna took a four-month relationship sabbatical, saying she was suffering from stress, and headed off to recover at a clinic in Austria. The peripatetic pair then renewed their romance, with talk among some of their friends that they planned to marry, fueled by a public declaration by James of his love for Donna adding, for good measure, that he wanted children. But now, with Miss Eyre's focus firmly on ice, the prospect of any imminent engagement looks distinctly frosty. Getty Agena Stein makes her TV debut as a tough cop in the BBC One thriller Hard Sun making her TV debut as a tough cop in the BBC One thriller Hard Sun, involving a plot to bring about the end of the world, to be shown next month, was a bruising experience for Agnes Stein. The model turned actress was left black and blue from by GHT scenes. In one sequence she is attacked with a knife by her disturbed son, played by Jojo Makari, we ended up really punching each other and we were both very bruised at the end of it, says Agnes, 34, it's my first serial and doing it was a shock to the system. I found it pretty grueling, probably just as dramatic as her own life story. Plucked from obscurity while working in a Manchester fish and chip shop, Agnes went on to become a supermodel known for her androgynous look. She married Hollywood actor Giovanni Ribisi, a Scientologist eight years her senior, but they parted two years ago in the divorce he kept two of their five homes. A year later she married her best friend, American hedge fund manager Joel McAndrew in New York. Getty Vasey, who was sacked as culture minister by Theresa May, is still aggrieved at losing his post at Vasey, a close Cameron ally who was sacked as culture minister by Theresa May when she became PM, is still Aggrieved at losing his post, I suppose, I'm hurt, bitter, thoroughly ed off to have been fi red, says the MP for wanted Jin Didcot, who admits he hasn't handled the loss well, there's been typical man behavior. Sulking, being impractical, inability to cope. 
When the EU referendum campaign began, the former barrister toured the TV studios defending Cameron's Remain position. None of us expected to lose nobody, planned what would happen in the aftermath. We stuffed the country up by accident, a harsh critic of the way Brexit is being carried out. He warns that he might rebel later on some aspects of the EU withdrawal. Well, he adds, I can speak freely now, because I'm not part of the negotiations and I don't talk to the government anymore, but I believe that as a country we're in a very difficult cult position and Brexit is going to be a painful and tortuous operation. Getty Haley at 12 stars in the BBC TV series Howard's End There is much discussion about social position in Howard's End, the Sunday night BBC TV series starring Haley at 12. So does the actress, who grew up in a London council flat, think that class is still a big factor in our lives? I think it's embedded in our DNA, unfortunately. Class is still something we're living with daily, says Haley. I don't come from money but I've been able to make my way in the world a lot more easily than had I been born in Edwardian England. Haley, 35, went to a comprehensive school and was offered a place at Oxford but failed to get the requisite A-levels grades. She reflects, I think I sabotaged it. I remember that when it was clear I wasn't going to go to university I felt liberated. Having once said that her relationships came and went in two-year cycles, Haley now has a new boyfriend, a doctor whom she has known since she was 10. They were reintroduced by her sister. She feels this is the man with whom she wants to settle and have children, smiling. I've finally met someone I want to share my life with. In Maria Sharapova's newly published autobiography, she writes of her 2004. Wimbledon triumph when she beat Serena Williams in the third set that the trophies were handed out by Prince Charles, the head of the All England club. Yet Charles has never read a match at Wimbledon. In fact, confides a chum, he loathes tennis. Bearded Bake Off star Paul Hollywood, 51, has a particular memory of one childhood Christmas. When I was 12, I saved up my pocket money to buy a box of after eights for my mum and hid them under the stairs. Then we had a row. I went under the stairs and ate them all. Nick Harvey Rex Shutterstock Murray Berry married her husband, retired antique book stealer Paul Hunnings, in 1966 with engagement rings in the news. Mary Berry recalls how she coped when the man who asked her to marry him revealed he had lost all his money in an investment that had collapsed. He had nothing, she says. He went to his mother and said, I want to ask Mary to marry me and I don't have anything to give her as a ring. So she gave him her diamond earrings, he put them in a matchbox and proposed to me while we were in Hyde Park. He rattled the box and said I could have the diamonds made into a ring, and that's what we did, and now Mary, 82, who married her husband, retired antique book stealer Paul Hunnings in 1966, adds, My mother told me never to take off my engagement ring. The number of rings that have been left on the edges of washbasins.